This is the brand new Wacom Cintiq 22 interactive pen display. Now, this can be used for all kinds of different things. A lot of people use them for kind of digital art. So use them with programs like Illustrator and Photoshop to actually draw art and create art that way. We're going to be looking at it from more of a photographic standpoint. So editing photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm not much of an artist when it comes to drawing. So that's not really going to be something that I'm going to be particularly able to test this out with. I did have a little bit of a play actually in Illustrator and Photoshop, just, just having a draw with the pen. I can see how that would be amazing if you are an artist, if you are a digital artist like that. It's, it, it seems like an incredible tool for that kind of thing. But we're going to look at it from more of a photographic standpoint. Now I'm coming into this with the perspective of someone who hasn't really used these tablets before. I've had a, I've had a little bit of a play with uh, some of the kind of touch pads that Wacom produce, but I've not played with one of the actual kind of displays, a bit like this. I've not actually been able to use a pen on one of the displays. And I've got to say, instantly, it is so intuitive. Being able to actually draw straight onto your photographs, whether you're in Photoshop or Lightroom, doing those local adjustments is so easy on this. It's very, it's very straightforward. You don't really need to practice. It's just, it's just very intuitive. And it's definitely a lot easier than using a mouse. Now let's jump into some of the specs just so we can get some of that out of the way. So it's a full HD display. It's a 22 inch display as well. So you've got 1920 pixels horizontally, 1080 pixels vertically. That gives you a nice amount of detail, gives you a good amount of clarity as well. Now, because of the size of the display and the, the actual distance you're sitting away from it, I'd probably opt for a 4k screen but then again that is actually available in the pro version so the the Cintiq 24 Pro does have a 4k screen so if that's something you want along with some other stuff as well then that is available but this and I think this is quite clever Wacom have done this this is coming in at less than half the price of the pro version so that means that it's much more accessible to people who maybe haven't used tablets before but have thought about getting them, people who, who, who want to buy one but they don't want to put down quite as much money because they are using it photographically or something like that. I think if you're a digital artist, I imagine you might be looking at going for the pro version, but I think if you're, if you're interested in getting a tablet, this price point, and I'll pop a link down in the description so you can check out the full details, the spec and the price as well, but this price point makes it much more accessible to actually kind of get involved. Now, in terms of setup, this really couldn't have been easier. And I was actually a little bit worried that it was going to be a tricky thing to set up. But ultimately, the box has obviously got the, the display in it, the pen, and then three wires. So you've got the plug, just to plug it in and give the display power, an HDMI cable to connect to your PC, so you actually get the feed into the display, and then a USB-C cable, which just allows you to control the display. And you've got the pen and everything like that. Now, once I plugged that all in, I just went onto the Wacom website and downloaded the driver. That probably took about 30 seconds in total, including searching for the Cintiq 22. That was super easy. I ran the driver, it installed itself absolutely fine, and it just worked straight away. I had no issues with anything at all. The pen was working, everything was set up exactly how I wanted it to, and I had the desktop app as well in case I did want to change anything. It also comes with the Wacom Pro Pen 2, which is kind of like the industry standard for these kind of things. That pen is so, so good. And realistically, it's the pen by which all other pens are measured by. You've got 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. So you've got, you've got an incredible amount of uh, kind of versatility there with how hard you're pushing it. It really makes it incredibly intuitive to use. You've also got things like tilt recognition and things like that. Now for me, where this really shines is in the kind of local adjustment. So let's start off by talking about Lightroom a little bit. Now when you're doing the global adjustments, so contrast, shadows, highlights, things like that, and you're using the sliders on the right of the screen, it's not that much different from doing it with a mouse on your normal monitor. But when you go into doing local adjustments, so adjustment brushes, graduated filters, things like that, there's a massive, massive difference. And especially I found in terms of things like adjustment brushes, and it probably would change a little bit the way that I edit. Being able to actually draw in those adjustment brush kind of filters and being able to use the pressure of the pen to kind of set the opacity, set the flow of what I'm drawing in there is so intuitive and it creates such a different editing experience. Now, I'm the kind of person who likes to really get in there and edit my photos. I like to use my kind of dodging and burning to accentuate highlights and shadows and, and do a lot of kind of local adjustments as well as the broader global adjustments. So for me, this was amazing. Lightroom-wise, this was incredible. Able to, able to kind of paint in bits of exposure or bits of contrast and clarity and be able to just change 
color balance and stuff in different parts of the image but with the pen makes it so easy to do and the pen is so comfortable to use as well that this was an incredible way of editing a photo now jumping into photoshop where i would generally remove things from photos and do all kinds of stuff like that again the experience was incredibly intuitive so using things like the clone stamp tool to remove things just becomes a lot easier with the pen because it's it's just like actually drawing so it looks like it feels like you're rubbing something out or you're drawing over something actually speaking of erasing as well when you turn the pen over it's actually got an eraser on the other side a bit like a pencil so you can actually be drawing in a mask and then just flip the pen if you've gone too far and actually just erase a little bit of that mask. It makes, especially masking things out in Photoshop, removing things and doing adjustment brushes in Lightroom just so easy and, and, and really just an enjoyable editing process. Now just going back to the pen for a moment, so as well as obviously the nib, the different levels of pressure sensitivity and the eraser on the back, you also got two customizable buttons. Now as default, one is set to right click and the other controls some, some settings for the pen and the display themselves. But otherwise, it's super easy to set that up to be almost anything you like, to make it kind of feel however you want it to feel. Now I know people who use these for everything. They actually started using them for Photoshop and Lightroom work, but they ended up never really going back to a mouse because they just find this so much easier. I can totally imagine that happening after, after using this for a while. I've been using it for the best part of a day, and I've got to say, it's really it's very quick to become attuned to it and kind of, it's just very intuitive to use. And it certainly makes editing, certainly in the style that I edit, much, much easier and just, just a really nice experience. I've really, above all else, apart from the kind of ease of use and stuff, I've just really enjoyed using this. It's been really nice. Now, if you do have any questions about the display at all or any other Wacom products, pop them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think and whether you've ever used one of these to edit your photos. I do think it's uh, it's quite a different experience and, and once you've done it, it's, uh, it's easy to see why people stick with it. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe as well for new content. We've got new stuff all the time. I'll see you in the next video, and as always, thanks for watching.